you know, getting up in the morning and singing that song. Our parents taught it us, and I hope that we have taught that to our children, even though some of them are probably not in the church, but they will remember this song, and they will remember in time. This is the first education, is get up in the morning and praising the Lord and giving the Lord thanks, and I like them. The last answer, the man that loves and fear thy name shall see their hopes fulfilled. The mighty God will come past them with favor as a shield. Let us continue as we sing 590, 590. 590. Trust and obey. Everybody? Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to another Sabbath school and a special day, which is Education Day. Parents, if you can begin playing the PowerPoint for me. The story of the two frogs. It is said that stories serve to put children to sleep and also to wake up the adults. 
Have you heard the story of the two frogs in a milk pail? It is said that there were once two frogs that fell into a bucket of milk. They immediately realized that it was impossible to swim for too long in that liquid. At first, the two frogs kicked around in the milk to reach the edge of the container, but it was too high and they only managed to splash and slide back inside. They felt that it was increasingly difficult to come to the surface and breathe. One of the frogs said aloud, I can't take it anymore. It's impossible to get out of here. We aren't going anywhere since I'm going to die. I don't see why I should prolong this suffering. I don't understand the point of dying exhausted by a useless effort. That said, it stopped kicking and sank quickly. The other frog, more persistent or perhaps more stubborn, said to itself, there's no way. I can't do anything to get out of this thing. However, even if death approaches, I prefer to fight until my last breath. I don't want to die a second before my time comes. It kept kicking and splashing in the same place without advancing an inch. For hours and hours it did this. After moving and shaking it, its legs for so long, the milk began to turn into butter. And eventually, the frog was able to touch a firmer surface. Surprised, the frog jumped and reached the edge of the container. From there, it was able to return home, croaking cheerfully. Thank you, Terence. What does this story teach us? It, it teaches that in adversity, we should persevere no matter what the outcome. And for the frog, wasn't it good that it was a positive outcome? He churned and churned and churned, turning the milk into butter. Today on this Education Day, we will be looking at adversity. And we're going to find out more about adversity. And we want you to understand that your, your, your strength as a Christian comes through adversity. What is adversity? Adversity can be defined as trials, tribulations, and as we are studying this quarter, crucibles. In Psalm 119, verse 71, it says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Now, I wonder, how is it good for anyone to be afflicted? Another translation says, My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. How is it any good for you or for me to go through pain and tribulations and hard times. We are going to explore this this morning as we go through our Sabbath school. We've all been like the frogs inside the pail, like I said before. Human beings are no different from the frogs of the story. We have different reactions to pain, struggles, and sorrows. When adversity comes, many succumb to it, while others decide to face it until they overcome. 
But what makes the difference between one and the other? In this world, the difference is made by Christ Jesus. It is when we put our burdens in his hands that we begin to do battle with hope, to kick our legs, so to speak, until our problems become butter and we can jump away. With this in mind, let's sing hymn 99 as our opening hymn, God Will Take Care of You. Let us all stand as we sing our opening song, number 99. God will take care of you. Much. May be seated. When we understand that God is with us, trials become a springboard to build character and increase our faith. It was in trial that Paul saw an opportunity to speak of Christ. Blessed are the people who in the midst of their tears, have words to encourage others. Only those who feel the Lord's presence in their lives can elevate themselves in times of affliction. 
At this time, if Sister Wilma Allen is here, she will come with the scripture reading. Okay, I see that she's not here. So I'm going to invite you to stand as we read the scripture together. The scripture reading will be taken from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 6 through 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 6 through 8. I'll give you an opportunity to find it in your Bibles. And we are going to be reading responsively, and I will begin. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth, doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Together, and the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Thank you, you may be seated. So, this morning we are talking about adversity, tribulations, trials, crucibles. And what do we do as Christians when we go through that tr th trial? And that scripture tells us that we should fear not. Be strong, because it isn't man that goes with us. But who goes with us? God goes with us. So we must remember that when we're going through our crucibles, he's right beside us. For the apostle Paul to live as Christ, no one knows of joy and adversity if they don't have Christ in their heart. It is in these difficult moments that the Holy Spirit perfects and sustains us. Nothing gives more encouragement than to talk with our Father about those things that we can't talk to anyone else about. To let his presence penetrate our hearts and make us understand his purpose in us. At this time, I invite you to kneel in prayer as Sister Yvonne Adderley comes. Good morning and happy Sabbath. And good morning to you on Zoom Learn and on YouTube as we bow before the Lord God, our maker. Kind Father, this morning, we humble ourselves in your divine presence. Lord, on this education day, Lord, we realize that you were the voice and still is the greater teach, greatest teacher of them all. And Father, as we bow, we just humble ourselves once again. We say thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the week. You brought us to your sanctuary, Lord. May you open the doors of our, of our heart as we accept, Lord, and worship you today in the beauty of holiness. Lord, be with all those who are on their way. We pray for our pastor and his family of this great edifice, and we pray for the, for the sick, the shut in, those who are grieving and mourning, those that are going through trials and tribulation and temptation. We just want to say thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon us all. You who taught us, Lord, the Lord's prayer in saying, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our God, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen.
Thank you, Sister Yvonne. This Education Day, we are talking about adversity, trials, tribulations, crucibles, and how we should face them as children of God. In times of difficulty, we can focus on the words of discouragement that we hear around us. These are times when we bear our faults and look for answers and feel responsible for those things that happen to us. Job, for example, had friends who discouraged him while trying to give him advice. God eventually answered Job with questions. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Job did not exist yet. But we have a God who is from everlasting to everlasting. And he is willing to show us the way out in the maze of our problems. Welcome all to his holy presence. I would like for you to now direct your attention to the screen as we learn about some individuals who went through adversity and how they faced them. The first, John Bunyan. Adversity, adversity knocked on his door when he was imprisoned for not having the license to preach. What at first would be three months was prolonged for 12 years. But he did not stop preaching the word of God, even though he was in prison. He was pardoned and he became a pastor. But it did not take very long for him to lose his freedom when the pardon was withdrawn. He was sent back to prison. It was there that he wrote the book entitled The Pilgrim's Progress, which is possibly the most widely read book in English. John Milton. It's beautiful to contemplate the colors, the sky, the face of the people you love, the road you walk, the color of your shoes, the affinity of the sea, but how difficult it is not to be able to enjoy that. John Milton was blind, but his blindness was no impediment to him. He became the author of one of the greatest poems in history, Paradise Lost, even in his blindness. His works competes with those of writers such as William Blake, Edgar Allan Poe, Mary Shelley, and William Shakespeare. What are you to do when everything around you is in complete darkness? <clears throat> he says, seek the light from within. Ask God to illuminate your mind and show you the path you must begin to walk. His blindness was irreversible, but God gave him a new vision on life, and he can do the same for us. Abraham. Abraham was blessed of God. He didn't have the economic problems that most of us have, but although he did not have that, he didn't have everything that he asked. He says, I know I didn't lose everything I owned, but God had asked me to sacrifice my most precious possession. All who are parents know that they're not afraid to lose everything for the health or welfare of a child. But, he says, I knew in whom I had believed and decided to let his will be done and not mine. And God provided a lamb. His distress, though great, because of his faith, because his faith was even greater, God provided a lamb. And God can do the same for you and I when we go through our adversity. The current Christian. Why do we sometimes feel afflicted or feel that some things or situations go wrong for us? It's because we build gods. We fill them with attributes. We give them powers that they don't have 
and we magnify them. And when rain, fire, or wind make them fall or disappear, we feel that we've been betrayed, deceived, and disappointed. What do we do when these kinds of situations fill us with anguish? Many of us want to seek other gods to cling to, forgetting that our trust must be placed in the author and finisher of our faith, Christ Jesus. Seek the Lord for wisdom in every emergency. In every trial, plead with Jesus to show you a way out of your troubles. Then your eyes will be opened to behold the remedy and to apply to your case the healing promises that have been recorded in his word. In this way, the enemy will find no place to lead you into mourning and unbelief. But instead, you will have faith and hope and courage in the Lord. And that is taken from Ellen G. White, Selected Messages, Volume 2. It is by fighting with the strength of Christ that we will be victorious, for there is none like the mighty Christ. Amen, church? At this time, we will be favored with a selection from Sister Damali David.
adversities, tribulations, crucibles. What do we do? We remember that all of our help comes from the Lord. The fact that we are called upon to endure a trial shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious which he desires to develop. If he saw in us nothing whereby he might glorify his name, he would not spend time in refining us. He does not cast worthless stones into his furnace. The Ministry of Healing, chapter 40, page 471. At this time, please listen to the mission story recorded by Sister Marcia Walker. Happy Sabbath, Church. Our mission story for today comes from the country of Brazil. It is entitled Sabbath Ultimatum, Diogo. Diogo was desperately poor, and his employer had given him an ultimatum. Work on Sabbath or get fired. What could he do? Months earlier, when Diogo had gotten married, he was so poor that he couldn't rent a house in his homeland of Brazil. So he and his bride moved in with, with an aunt who didn't charge any rent. At the time, Diogo was working as an intern. Then he learned that his wife, Nayara, was pregnant, and he began to look for a better paying job. His real dream, however, was to own his own business. Diogo spoke to God about his dream. Dear God, he prayed, please help me find a job where I can earn enough money to fulfill my dream of having my own company. It was not easy to find work because of his Sabbath convictions. Nobody seemed to want to hire a Seventh-day Adventist who asked for time off to worship God from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. But Diogo didn't give up. He kept praying. One day, he got a call from a gas station 
that was looking to hire a security guard. He told the owner that he was a Seventh-day Adventist and could not work on Saturdays. By the grace of God, the owner gave Sabbaths off, and the Diogo had a job. The gas station was located far from Diogo's house. He traveled to work by motorcycle, and he worked every night except on Sabbaths. It was a dangerous commute and a dangerous job, but he really needed the job. One day, the gas station owner told Diogo that he would no longer give Sabbaths off. He gave the ultimatum, work on Sabbath or get fired. What could Diego do? Diego told him that he could no longer work at the gas station. At that time, Diogo's church was organizing a Caleb Mission Project. Caleb, Caleb Mission Project is a South American division initiative that encourages church members to participate in community outreach through home visits, Bible studies, and other activities. Diogo had always enjoyed community service, and he thought, If I don't have a job, I can have time to volunteer. But then he remembered that working as a volunteer would add extra expenses to his limited budget. Furthermore, he had a newborn daughter and was still dreaming about opening his own business. After much prayer, Diogo decided to volunteer for the Caleb Mission Project. He wanted to be faithful to God and to answer his call to mission. When the Caleb Mission Project ended, Diogo found that he had an extra 700 Brazilian real, which is equivalent to 135 US dollars left in his pocket despite the extra expenses. With this money, he started his own business. God has been faithful to him. For the past four years, Diogo has owned a successful bakery. As a lay member, he also helped lead an Adventist church in Brazil. The church organizes a Caleb mission project every year, and many young people have been baptized as a result. Diogo says, I have learned that when we are faithful to God, he takes care of us. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help establish four new churches in Brazil. Thank you for planning a generous offering on September 24th. Thank you for listening. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. So once again, we get from this story through trials and tribulations. Diego said, you have to be faithful to God. There'll be bumps and turns in the road. But remember, our scripture said, be, do, be not dismayed, be strong, for God goes with you. And um, I'd like to welcome Megan. <laughs> I just recognize you and happy birthday again. Good to have you home. At this time, it is... Now time for the lesson study, and I will invite Brother Stafford and Bristol just as to come with the lesson, and I will pray before we begin. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, great teacher, powerful Holy Spirit, we ask, Lord, that you will anoint Brother Stafford as he come with your precious word. We pray that it would prick hearts, it would find receptive hearts, and that it would make a difference in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I'm going to add a little bit of amendment to that prayer. It's going to be Sister Joan and Brother Chris Sawyer accompanying us this morning. I'm telling you, no, uh, Sister Joan, we need, we, we need a woman on top, okay? Get up there. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. Happy Sabbath once again, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. I'm telling you, uh, the, the, man, the, the, the Sabbath school, 
uh, superintendent, I mean, the, the, the message that I did this morning, it's like a sermon. It's like you can say amen and go home. It's just so powerful. And then the song by Sister uh, Amani. I mean, that song, that's my, that's my favorite song. I actually played that song this morning as an inspiration to myself and my devotion. So God works in synergy, and I'm just so grateful for that. So as we get into our lesson study, we're going to have Sister Joan to take the lead. Sorry to put you on the spot. Thank you, Brother Chris, for accompanying us this morning. Amen. Yeah, I'll pray for me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just bow our heads and get into the word. Father God, we just want to thank you for the privilege to open your word and review what you would have spoken into our lives and our hearts this week. We pray especially for your Holy Spirit to help us because so many times we misunderstand you and what you're doing in our lives and we lose hope because of it. May we have indestructible hope in you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Now, this just just this just the topic of this lesson gives me goosebumps like indestructible hope. So, when you hear that, what comes to mind? Indestructible and hope. Anybody? Can't hear you. We have to go we to have the two mics. We have two mics, Sister right Rollins. So, right. uh, anyone's closer to you, either in the aisle to your left, or one immediately to your right behind. Uh, just before she gets started, uh, let's just read our memory text. And, we've, and it says, and it's Romans 5 and 5, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. And when I thought about hope, you know, uh, we cannot believe the lies of the enemy in terms of how he characterizes God. And, you know... You uh, straight to the point. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, I, this is a second and a second paragraph on, on our opening uh, Saturday on Sabbath. And it talks about C.S. Lewis. And the question was asked about the lion and representing... You know, it was a fictional story. But in terms of the lion representing as far as Christ. And the person asked, is he safe? And the response was, he's not safe, but he's good. Mm, and when sorry. I thought about that in, in serving God, serving God and being a Christian is not safe. <laughs> it is not safe. It is, a, it is a one of a mantle to pick up to be a Christian. But even though serving God is not safe, but we know that he is good. And in that, we can you know, hold our hope and no matter what situation we find ourselves in, that we can trust him that he will do good for us. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like that stuff. But, um, um, mine, mine was uh, the first part. Uh, it says, when we find ourselves within the crucible, and I, I just stopped there, right? Is what do we do uh, when things get hot? This is indestructible, going back to the title, this indestructible hot, um, hope. And here we see the picture of this gentleman or I, I'm going to say gentlemen, of this person mm -hmm. who is in the middle of the fire, things are getting hot, and what happens with our hope, right? It is indestructible. It, is, it doesn't move, it doesn't flinch, and all because of the love of God, because it's been poured into our hearts, right? Um, to me, I just really had to pause on that for a moment uh, because it's just, it's so, much, it's so much there because hope is being indestructible. I love that. Amen. Okay, I just, thank you, gentlemen. I just want to go back to my initial question since nobody out there. Just so you have this thought in your mind about what does indestructible mean. And when I looked it up in the dictionary, it says something that cannot be broken or destroyed or ruined or rendered effect, ineffective. So I want you to think about that when you think about indestructible and then hope your expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. And in that particular dictionary, um, they said that the archaic meaning is trust. So it's almost like we can use hope and trust mm -hmm. interchangeably. 
And I hope as we go through this lesson, we figure out ways that we can strengthen our hope to make it where it cannot be broken, destroyed, ruined, or rendered ineffective. Amen. Um, and just want to stick a plug in that, that same paragraph that Stafford um, pointed out. And I'm going to throw it out there because I had some difficulty with this, Stafford. Okay. You know me. Yes, throw it out there. Hope somebody catches it. <laughs> Is God not safe? Mm -hmm. I, I had a problem with that. <laughs> However, I, I agree that serving God may not always be safe because right. we have an enemy mm. who attacks us. I agree with you, may not always be safe. Yes. But is God safe? Yes. Is God, I don't, I don't wanna go, I don't want us go out of here with, with thinking <laughs> God is not safe. So yes, I'm sorry, safe. I have to disagree with the statement in the last time here this morning. Uh, absolutely, I mean. We're, thoughts. Yeah, what do you guys think? Is, the, is God safe? That's a consensus. I mean, you know, okay. <laughs> is, he, is he safe when you, when you trust in God, when things happen? But he, he says that he'll never... Um, leave us or forsake us. Leave us or forsake us. But man, what happened when my wife leave me? <laughs> when I break my heart? What happened when there's death in the family? Yes. What happens when we lose our jobs? What happens yeah. when these things happen that are... When somebody commits the unspeakable to a family member, murder, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? These are the things that, that bring pain and anguish to us. And, and really, especially when we have something happens to a young child and you're like, how did that happen to that young child? Wasn't he not safe? Um, I, I give you an instance with just the, the young man, the young boy in the pond. And um, I shouldn't say in the pond. That sounds so bad. But you all know what I mean. Yeah, the this is the story of what happened, right? Yeah. Where was the safe? Why wasn't God holding on to him? Um, I, I, I heard the parents came out and the father and all of this, um, but wasn't somebody saying, man, wasn't God supposed to be checking out for my child? My hope is gone. Yeah. Yeah. He, this was an innocent child. Yeah. So, uh, these, these, so these real, are questions we're struggling with this week. I'm, I'm throwing this out because these are real things that happen that shake you and we are not... Um, we are all susceptible to them happening. We all have our challenges. But when we face it, what is our response to it? What is our understanding of God? Mm -hmm. Better on it. Keith and answer the Barbara. Uh, mic on the floor. Uh, just want to make sure that's okay, working. I think, I think I got it now. Okay. There you go, Keith. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, when, we, when I think about is God safe? Um, I think many times our perspective um, comes into play of what we consider safe. Uh, again, when we look at the fact that God does nothing arbitrary or he not allows things to happen haphazard because he's in control, when we look at it through that lens that God wants what's best for me, we know that God is safe. But whatever comes my way may not be safe for me. So um, in a way that um, doesn't necessarily take in God and the fact or the question whether he is safe or not. It's just that sometimes circumstances he allow us to go through um, may have that question of safety. But when I look at hope and think about what that means, um, Normally, hope is when we have an expected end, when we have an idea of what happens at the end of the day. And so once we have that knowledge of, first of all, God, because we don't know what all goes on around us. We don't know how they happen. Many times we don't know how, and very many times, if not always, we don't know why. But when we consider that, we know the end of the story in that we have um, a manual to go by, the Bible, which God, which is a proven, which is proven truth. And when we are connected with that and God on a daily basis, 
that gives us the hope of the end that we see is coming because we know what that end is. And that is where hope is. And that is where that hope becomes indestructible when we latch onto that and we latch onto the God who gave that. And that is where our hope becomes indestructible. And that is where we know that even though our circumstances may not be safe, we know we have a God who is safe. Knowing the big Amen. picture. Amen. I like Sister that. Barbara. Sister Barbara. Sister Barbara. <laughs> Happy Sabbath once Happy again. Sabbath. Um, we were reminded by God that the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but he comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And yes, God is good. God is safe because in this world is tribulation, trials, snares, and cares. But he said, be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. Thank so you. let's look at yeah. Sunday because I think the theme... It's tied into the big picture. The big yeah. picture, yeah. Right? So, and we're going to get some Bible in here, right? So let's go to Habakkuk 1 and 1 to 4, right? And just to summarize it for, for time, here's Habakkuk. He's crying out to God, and he's seeing all of this violence and this injustice that is happening, right? And we can bring it practically to our lives, right? You know, you, you work on a job, you have a, a supervisor, that seems as though they just on you, on you, or uh, situation that you're faced with. And they're just prospering. Now, you're, you're the Christian. They're getting the promotion. They're getting this. They're getting that. And it happens, right? And we see it all the time within our world, right? And then you cry out to God. And then the response that you're thinking that God would say, you know, I'm going to take care of this. And then God tells you, say, no, that's that supervisor there. <laughs> They're going to get a higher position. <laughs> They're going to be there much longer. This situation that you're faced with with your health, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So how, when we face with those circumstances, that how do we keep the big picture in mind? When the thing that you're asking God to deliver you from, he's actually come back with a different word that say, you know what? It's going to get worse. How do we deal with that? Anybody? I... I would say to look at the bigger picture, like Sister Barbara said, we all realize that we are in the great controversy. And one of the texts that they used at the beginning of the lesson was Revelation 12, verse yep. 7, which says, and there was war in heaven. And then Romans 8, 22, which talks about the whole creation groaning, wanting to be delivered. And when we look at the big picture. Yes, we're all living our individual lives, but it's not about us. There is a bigger picture. God is on trial, right? And the enemy has made accusations about God. Now, sometimes, like say if you're reading a story, you read the beginning, you can't go through all that stuff, you know. I was... Um, looking at a series and it started to annoy me because I was like, why don't they just get to the end of the story? You know what I mean? Like, so I just like skipped to the end. Because you wanted a good ending? <laughs> and watch the end and I'm like, if you go through all this stuff or what? Okay. But sometimes that's how we are, right? We just, we just want to get to the, okay, God's going to deliver me. Get to the deliverance. I, I don't want to go through all this, but I think the lesson is going to point out 
um, why we go through some of these things. But there is that big picture, and if we keep that in mind, knowing that the enemy is trying to do everything he can to discredit the character of God, including using us as pawns mm -hmm. in that, uh, it'll help us to keep focus. And I think Monday will bring out Job's whole experience as well with that system. Right. Bernadette? Amen. Um, we must remember that wickedness, violence, and all sorts of wrong judgment is not of God. It is permitted by God. But I don't know, I don't know about you all, but I feel like every time I am in the fire, and, I, and I'm thinking that Satan knows this too, but he's going to try his best to, to pull me down and, and wear me down and take away hope. But every time I come out, I feel stronger. I almost feel like the bionic man. <laughs> because in that fire, you are, you are so busy asking God to, to be with you. Mm -hmm. This fire is causing you to grow. And God is getting glorified. Like the story of Job. I, I feel like Satan was set up. Right? <laughs> Because God knew that uh, down, trickling down the years, the story is going to be told so that we can have the hope and we will see how God, God delivered Job and God will deliver us. And every little fire we get into causes us to grow stronger. And the next fire, like Habakkuk says, it's more to come. It's for our growth and God's glorification. Mm -hmm. it's, gonna, it, it's, it's just adding to God's kingdom. We need to look at the big picture. Not the things that we lose or the things that, you know, the people that hurt us or anything like that. We're coming out stronger, closer to God. And God is going to be glorified. So, Sister Bernadette, right? Um, before we push on that one, right? I hear the results, right? I hear the results. The results were, was that you grew stronger, right? Um, trials happening, you held faith, you held on. Um, and the results were you felt stronger, stronger than Credible Hulk, right? But during it, there's, there's a key thing, and I wanted to ask you. During the time of when the struggle starts to when the time that you get relief, what you doing? For somebody who is out there now, what is, the, what is the single thing that you need to do between when it start to when you find that relief until you, you know, you, it ain't that hot no more. But what do you do in between? Because there's some people right now that in it, you, you, right? What, what, what do you do? You, you do the, <laughs> you, you've been in the fire. And, and you feel like a big elephant sitting on your chest. Right. And you feel like, I can't no longer go on. Mm -hmm. Lord, you have, to, you have to take this from me. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, pull me out of this. Otherwise, I die. I, I, and I, I, I take that. I, I can go now to yes. sister, see mm -hmm. Sister Barbara say something, right? Mm -hmm. um, our own. It's our own persons. It's, it's something within us. Like, you're always working on us. And, and our, our own expectations that we have sometimes. And I can throw one word out there. Wait. That's, when I, that's when a I hard hear, word. <laughs> when I hear hope, the other four letter word that goes along with hope is wait. We have to not give up. We yeah. have to wait on the Lord. We have to wait on it because if you pull us out of the fire too quick, we ain't done. We ain't done yet. Half, half baked pancake. Half baked. <laughs> Brother Brown. Right. Brother Brown. Go, go, Brother Brown. We can talk about half baked. Yeah, in we a can minute. get there. We get there. Happy Sabbath and good morning. Happy Sabbath, Sabbath, Brother Brown. Lazarus was Jesus' friend. Peter was Jesus' disciple. Peter walked on water, right? And you would say, well, you know, um, being with God, is it safe? Jesus, Jesus 
could have come, but he wait, he wait until his good friend, his, 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 his good friend, he wait till he died. How would you feel? You know, Mara, Mary Mara didn't feel good about this. The Jesus, why, why you take so long to come? Now you you supposed to be you supposed to be a man in charge. We know you're gonna rise on the, on the resurrection morning. No, but Jesus, I am here. I am here. Brothers and sisters, when we go through and when we look around what's happening around us, when God call us to do a certain work for him, each and every one of us have different fingerprints. Our hair on our hair is numbered. God have a work for each one of us. But when we go through, sometimes we feel as though that, like, like Brother Ambrister um, say, you're not being promoted and everything happening around you and you, you're a Christian. But God, why, why are these things happening? Brothers and sisters, let us hold on to hope because this model, this model, do we believe that this model shall put on immortality? But let us go through and God is going to see us through. Yes, Amen. sister. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. morning. Give us your um, name and welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. Aquila Jones. Jones? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, two things. Uh, the, uh, the sister earlier mentioned when, some, when a child or whoever dies, they go to heaven. They may have gone to heaven. Well, no one's going to heaven just yet. Everyone is just going to the grave, mm -hmm. just to be clear on that. Um, also, um, you asked the question, brother over here, uh, what you do when you're going through. Mm -hmm. And I have two four-letter words, and that is to pray and to read God's word. Because without prayer, without reading and knowing what God is telling us, because that's how we know what his will is. That's how we know what to do. If we don't read his word, we're left to think of things on our own. And we know where that gets us, into more trouble. And so it's important for us to read and read and know what God is saying to us. Because he will speak to us through his word. And we talk to him in prayer about what we're dealing with. And he will show us where to go in his word uh, and how to apply. And the Holy Spirit is there to encourage us and to help us accomplish what he told us to do. Absolutely. Thank Amen. you, just, Sister. Just before Amen. Uh, Sister Walker get to the mic, you know, uh, there's a phrase that says, when two elephant fights, only the grass get trampled. <laughs> and I think sometimes we feel like the grass. We have uh, God and Satan fighting in this it is a cosmic spiritual battle, and we are feel something like we're the grass being trampled on. And so it, it takes so much sometimes to look at, it's actually not really a fair fight. God is going to win. And so I think sometimes we, if, like Sister Joan was saying, get into the back of the book, God wins. And so sometimes what we have to go through, we just keep our eyes on the big picture. Sister Walker. What would we do when we're going through it? And we must pray, read, and wait. But what do I tell a friend who is not a Christian when she's going through something? Like this morning, rushing out to come to church, when I checked my phone, my boss sent to me that her niece have stage four cancer. Mm. She is not a Christian. What do I tell Diane? tomorrow when I see her. How do I approach Diane to tell Diane that, hey, there is a God, and there is healing in God. Read his word, wait on God. How do I go about doing that? She's not a Christian. We as Christians, we know when we are going through our crucibles, our trials, we know how to get down on our knees and fight our battles on our knees. But how do I tell Diane to do that? It, that, that's, that's, that's the easiest thing to do. <laughs> see, see, and I, I can answer that. The easiest thing to do, in my opinion, is call a personal testimony. Mm. See, in my opinion, there was a reason why you got that information, and there was a reason why you have a relationship with that individual. 
the Lord made sure that that could happen, right? We have our own testimonies. Yes. Our hope, my hope, got built on the stories of the testimonies of Job, of Abraham, Joseph, and others. My, te my, 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 my strength didn't come today, this morning. My strength, my hope came because I remember all of the challenges that I have gone through in the past, and yes. I remember how God has brought me through. Amen. Amen. That's my personal testimony. When yep. I look and I see, we talking about hope and whatnot and everything and these things that are built on, when I see in my own imagination, I see um, Stephen getting stoned. I see that. But then I, I remember reading that Stephen's face shone like an angel. And I'm like, how is it that this fella could be taking blows by pure rocks mm -hmm. and his face looking like an angel? That's implanted in me. Yeah. When I was stuck, Amen. who did I call upon? I call upon God and I, yes. read, I have my personal testimony. So when, you, when, you're, when you're faced with that challenge of what do you tell your friend, you tell your friend how God has worked in your life. Amen. That's your personal testimony. Amen. And that becomes real to her because she's like, this thing worked in her life. It is personal. I have to take it. Good? Just a sense. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I've heard it said that while we're going through our difficult times, we pray. Yes. We read God's word. Yes. Um, like she said, she asked about what do you do? What do you tell someone when they're not a Christian? Like you said, you also be, you tell, um, your personal testimony. I also feel as though when you come to the realization that you know yeah, who you up. are and whose you are, the crucibles become a little bit lighter because you know for your good and for your glory, you have to go through these things. Everyone has a race to run, right? I cannot say, oh, because Stafford is being promoted before I am. That means that Stafford is better than me or things are happening better for Stafford. Mm -hmm. That is the plan that God had for Stafford before he was knit in his mother's womb. My, what, what, is, what is for me is for me. God has designed that before I was knit in my mother's womb. And we know that everything that happens to us is not happenstance. God allows everything to happen, Amen. right? It does not, okay, um, with Job, he knew that what was going to happen, right? We don't know, but he knows. He knows the bigger picture. He knows, he knows the bigger picture, and that is what he has for us in order for us to be who he truly wants us to be. So, I, so, just, so Brother Stafford, I, I, I yeah. mean, and thanks, Sister Sands, mm -hmm. and amen to that. <laughs> right? Uh, we just got a cue. Our time is kind of... Yeah, we want to get right? to much of the lessons so, we can. So for the commentaries can be quick to the point. Right. We greatly appreciate it. Indeed. And as Sister San said, because we're going to jump into Monday on this, right? Because she said one of the things is, she didn't use the word, <laughs> but it's understanding who we are and who he is. Yes. The word is identity. Who our father is... How do we identify with him? And how does he more so identify with us? Who our father is. So Stafford, let's, let's jump into to, to Monday for a moment. Uh, I'm going to get Brother Sylvester. Got to be quick so we can yeah, get on. Yeah. I, I just wanted to bring this point. Uh, she, when they were talking about how it related, when the person is going through something, yes. they, don't know, they, they, they don't know the Lord or nothing like that. But what you bring to mind, you bring them through their walk of life, you know, think about your life. Think about what people, and think about what happened. And something resonates, because I'm talking about from experience. When I find I was going through something, all of a sudden I began to look at what was happening over in my life. And then I remember the Lord. So if she think about it, 
and, you, and the way you coin your life, you start to tell them stuff and bring it back to their mind. So a lot of things come in, coming up in their life, mm -hmm. they say, oh, this happened, oh, that happened, oh, that happened. Right. And then reality struck in. Uh, I'm going to say something provocative in here. Right. So we see these things happening, right? Now, remember, keep in point, the Israelites was brought into cavity because of their sin, their disobedience to God. So many a times if we be uh, reflective on our lives, sometimes God allows these things to happen because of our, our behavior, and some of them are not good at times, but he does it so much to save us. And so when we look at Monday, who was our, our father, it goes back to Isaiah 45 and 5, and it says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. Many a times we find ourselves in these crucibles. They are self-inflicted. I can speak for it personally myself. I think my mom got a lot of scratch knees praying for me. <laughs> a lot of myself was self-inflicted. And I thank God for his grace that he allowed, how to say, the Syrians of my life, the Babylonians of my life to capture me. So when I am delivered, is, I can only say that it is him that done it. Nothing I could have done to save myself. The only thing, and sometimes when we, we find ourselves in these situations, the biggest way to failure is to give up. Once you give up, you have no hope at all of ever succeeding. The quickest way to failure is to give up. So when we look at God and we look at the situations in our life and prayer and waiting, Sometimes that's the all you can do. That's all you can do. I mean, you, you, you call the pastor. He pray for you. Don't do nothing. Church people pray for you. Nothing happens. You, you fast. Nothing happens. Right. The only thing you have to do sometimes in these crucibles, and, and God have it set up in a way, is just for you to just stand still. Just stand still. You know, t t go ahead, John. Are you Sister John, sorry. We're taking up all the woman time. Sorry, Sister John. You <laughs> go. Sister, your time stopping. No, sorry. I <laughs> I was going to concur, and especially with um, Carla, who said, you know, these things, and I think Monday points out, um, I don't 100% agree with that, that statement at the beginning either, <laughs> that he will never tell you what he's doing or what he's going to do, because um, the Bible says he always <laughs> tells us. Um, he always reveals what his plan is, mm -hmm. and it's, it's revealed in him. So, however, sometimes we get in the crucible, and it may be our own, or it may not be yes. our own. Like Job was blameless, and he found himself in a crucible. The Israelites were in captivity, and they found themselves in the crucibles. Those young people, or maybe those who went in the captivity, they may not have been the actual cause, but it was an accumulation of what had gone on for generations Bad behavior. that brought this upon them. And what God said was, sometimes you're not going to be delivered out of it. Okay. You are going to be in captivity for these 70 years. And don't believe the people who come to you prophesying. You know, sometimes <laughs> people ask you to pray. And I, I started saying, honestly, Lord, if this is your... You have to start, Lord, if this is your will. Because... You don't know the end from the beginning. And so many times we want immediate, and, and forgive me, sometimes people are sick. I said, Lord, if this is for their salvation, they need more time with you, That's bring right. them back. If Amen. you see they need to go now, let them go. Right. You understand? I, I, you, you look at a bigger picture. We want satisfaction now. We want relief now. But God said, don't believe them people who are telling you that you could be delivered and all of this. You could be here. And pray for your enemy. And pray for your enemy. And pray for the pray for your enemy. And pray for the enemy too. Live your life. <laughs> occupy. Don't get upset. Yeah. Do what you're supposed to do and pray for the peace of the people around you. Because yeah. when they have That's peace, crazy. then you will have peace. That's crazy. But you pray now <laughs> vengeance on them so they don't da -da -da -da. then you will have no peace because they have no peace. That's crazy. We need to, yeah, <laughs> wait and rest in God. Understand he has our best interests at heart. Amen. He loves us. We need to make him our rock. 
You know what I mean? Like the, the house yeah. that cannot be moved exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. And you know, we, we say Job was blameless. And we say he was going through this crucible and for no reason. I, I Not for no reason, but not I, because of his fault. Not because of his fault, exactly. right? Exactly. But even though that's still the case, God's still working on it, which is why I believe God had to knock on him and say, buddy, I need to remind you of who, who I am. I am. So yes. when we go on through that, and we, we look here at Job, I mean, the, the, the text says there's 60 jaw-dropping questions <laughs> that God put at Job. You know who I am. You know what I did. You yes. know what I created. And yes. he's not doing that to chastise him. Mm -hmm. He's doing that to help him to remember how big God really is. And, and that's what we need when we are going through our biggest challenges. Think to know it. that God is bigger than the challenge that is in front of us. That is what inspires us for hope, right? Yes. Um, we, we have to be constantly reminded because at sometimes we have our own arrogance, our own ego. We sit here and we say we hold behind a title or the church that we belong to or whatever it is. Where are we from? Our family. And God sometimes has to remind us, hey, buddy, I am big here. And you need to continue to look up to me for your strength, for everything, because I am the one. I am the creator. I am who I am. And so if we are continually reminded, then we get humbled, right? Amen. And, and then we start to see that power start to be released. Um, he is always there with us. Right? Uh, and I think that's what the other Tuesdays presence. presence goes through it. That even though we're there, he's right there holding our hand. Um, Boy, brother, key? Yes, before we jump into Tuesday, um, talking about who he is, you know, sometimes we wonder where the phrase or the saying, ignorance is bliss, mm. comes into play. Five minutes. Uh, it is Five minutes. this. When we um, we're not always made aware, if we are even made aware, why we go through what we go through. God has a plan, yes. He made us aware of his plan. The means through which that plan is accomplished in my situation, he may not reveal to me, and usually does not, because I don't need to know that. The point is, for that trial, is for me to know him. Amen. So we're back to who he is. So I think our crucibles are in our helplessness in those circumstances. I think that he wants to bring us to a state of helplessness where we realize it's not about me and it's not about what I can do to fix it. We got to look up. And so that is where we get to know who God is. Because Amen. through that, in our weakness, he is strong. So that's where our reliance has to Amen. come from him only. Amen. Sister Joan, with your permission, going to take a prerogative. We just got the word. We got five more minutes. I'm just going to jump to Thursday with your permission because I've learned ask a woman first before you do anything the hard way. <laughs> Thank you. So we, so we go to Thursday and we think about our father's discipline. And I came across a phrase that says, if a child is made in our image and likeness and cannot be perfect because we are not, if the child is not chastised in love, therefore it means that a child is therefore worshipped. And I thought that was very provocative. Okay. When we think about our father's discipline, you know, if God wants us to be in his image, because of love, he will chastise us. And sometimes when we think about God's discipline, I know I went dark with God for a good minute, like just dark. I was like, you know what? This can't be happening. Here I am, church. I come back to church, being out of church, come back to church. I'm an elder now, and then it seems like all hell break loose, right? And I just went dark. And so for a minute there, I, I, I step out, and then I started to think about, well, he kept you through all of that nonsense because he loved you. And so sometimes we misinterpret love when God hurts us as him against us. No, it's actually love. You only would discipline your child from growing further into wrong because you love them. And you want them to be safe. And so I, I think, and I'm not going to take so much time on this because I'm going to throw it to my other panel. So when we think about the father's discipline, 
how do we come together with that symmetry that this is an act of love? Uh, yeah. uh, to me, discipline is about creating habits. We have good habits and we have bad habits. Each one of those habits gives a result, negative result or positive result. Discipline, for me, is so that we could create a habit so that ultimately we could respond in an intelligent manner to when a situation comes about. And I think that's what the Lord has been trying to get through through all of us. If we create, if he disciplines us so that we could form good habits, then when something happens, we can respond to it in a positive manner as opposed to in a negative manner. Um, because sometimes things crash on us and we just, boom. Did we have the discipline around us so that we don't crash hard and go, to net, go a totally contrary way? But do we, does when something happened to us and circumstances happen to us, we respond in prayer. We respond, um, we respond by, by reading the word of God. Do we respond in negative thoughts or positive thoughts? Right? Um, and, and that's what the discipline helps us to do so that we could respond intelligently, God knowing that there will be um, all kinds of mess thrown at God's people, at his people. He wants us to respond intelligently, positively, so that we know exactly what happens. And this is why um, you see uh, with, when, when Christ was tempted. When Christ was tempted and he said, this, this, uh, Satan knew exactly all the scriptures <laughs> see, see. And, 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 and Christ was like, hey, listen, yeah. as it is written, yeah. he had a discipline already about him. As Amen. it is written, he knew exactly how to respond. Just a joke. Okay, so final. Discipline is never pleasant. No. no. But it's necessary for proper character de development. Absolutely. God desires us to reflect his character. Amen. And this is his character. We need to be there. And so all of his discipline is designed to help us reflect that character of love. And once we understand that, the Bible says we should not despise it. We shouldn't faint under it. And we should endure it because at the end, we will see the fruit. Holiness, peaceableness, and the fruit of righteousness in our lives which is what, what we will be able to take with us to heaven to live with God forever. Amen. So we cannot avoid godly discipline. So I will close with this. And I thought about this. And I remember we, me and my family, we just took a trip. And we went to the Bible Museum. And I remember my daughter, she bought this uh, little thing for me here. And it says, uh, be strong and courageous. And I took it from Joshua 1 and 9. And it meant so much to me at the time when she brought it to me because I'm going through a crucible. And I thought about this and I said, man, be strong and courageous. And then it comes to my favorite text, Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you said to Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you, I'm going to add hope in there and expect it in. So I want that to be leave with us today. Be strong and courageous. Know the thoughts that God thinks towards you. It may seem so dark right now. It may seem so difficult. But just remember that God says, I know what I think towards you to give you an expected end. So I just want to leave that to encourage the class, encourage myself, encourage everybody that we serve a loving God who loves you. He loves you. If you get nothing else from this lesson today, God loves you. Thank, Thank you, class. Amen. Amen to our panel of Sabbath school teachers. As we close Sabbath school, I would just like to express my thanks, first of all, to our teachers, to Sister Yvonne for the prayer, Sister Damali for the special, and I would also like to thank Sister Esme Cox. Um, this was her program. 
She just chose me to execute it because she could not be here. So I thank her for that opportunity, and I thank the Lord for making us all available to be used in his service. So on this Education Day, we have been talking about adversity, trials, tribulations, and crucibles. There are two types of adversities. One can be the result of disobedience or pride. The other type of adversity involves God's purposes being fulfilled in our lives through trials. That's how we end up being refined like gold. When a trial or challenge comes, let's pray to know that what our Heavenly Father wants us to learn from it. God is always ready to sustain us and help us to come, help us to come out strengthened in our spiritual life. At this time, we will take our closing special um, by Sister Carol and Lynn, and it was recorded in Guyana. And then afterwards, we'll have our health tip by Sister Cara Ferguson, our special first. I love you, Lord. All your mercies never fail me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Amen. Good morning. So our health tip this morning is water. What is water? Water is a colorless liquid composed of hydrogen and oxygen, which we all know as H2O. It is vital for life. Although it supplies no calories, drinking adequate amounts of water or staying hydrated is the first rule of health and nutrition. Our bodies can last weeks without food. However, just a few days without water. This makes sense when you realize that our bodies are made up of 60% water 
and our blood is 90%. Therefore, being dehydrated can affect us both physically and mentally. Seven to eight glasses a day is a requirement. Eight to 10 if you're sweating or working out. Add a lemon or cucumber slice to make it special. Benefits of water. Water may improve memory and mood. Research has shown that even mild dehydration may impair memory and mood, and everyone from children to the elderly. It may heighten anxiety. Hydration impacts the brain as well as the body. A lack of water may also increase the risk of headaches and migraines in some individuals. So drink water if you have a headache. It sometimes helps. Drinking water keep your mouth clean. Drinking water helps to flush bacteria and food debris out of the mouth. Drinking water fights off cavity and gum disease. It's good for your teeth because it keeps your mouth clean and reduces bad breath. Plaque cannot build up in a clean, hydrated mouth. It also helps to neutralize the pH of your saliva so that bacteria cannot strive in your mouth. Improve skin. Hi, ladies, listen to this. Water improves the skin tone. Drinking enough water helps the body to flush out toxins while giving you a healthier skin. Studies have revealed that drinking two cups of water can increase flow to the skin, which gives it an even tone. Prevent premature aging. Staying hydrated help increase the elasticity in the skin and help it to keep be moisturized longer. From preventing premature aging to giving you a plumper, younger looking skin, water is the magic ingredient that can resolve a, resolve a host of skin issues. Make drinking water, make drinking the required amount of water part of your daily routine. Your skin will thank you for it. Water helps prevent kidney damage. The kidney regulates fluid in the body. Insufficient water can lead to kidney stones and other problems other benefits. The brain cannot actually tell the difference between hunger and thirst. So often we mistake thirst as a sugar craving. The next time you feel the need for something sweet, try a glass of water first. Staying hydrated may also help with weight maintenance. It has been shown that having water before a meal may fill you up more and therefore promote weight loss through suppressing your appetite. Water protects the health of your heart. The more the heart pumps water, the stronger it becomes and protect against heart disease. Water improve, improve exercise performance for you athletes. There have been a lot of research into the effects of hydration or dehydration in athletes. And the results all pretty much conclude that dehydration do affect its performance. Fatigue. Fatigue is one of the first detectable symptoms of dehydration. When the human body suffers from dehydration, it experiences a decrease in blood volume. As a result, pumping oxygenated blood throughout the body becomes more difficult and less efficient. This extra work on the body can lead to fatigue. So top up with the water. It prevents constipation. Water helps to keep teens moving in the digestive system. So staying hydrated may help prevent constipation. Regular intake of water helps maintain a healthy gut and aids in proper digestion, regulates your bowel movement, and flushes toxins from your body through urine and feces. Did you know that drinking room temperature water offers a number, of, a number of health benefits? When you drink cold water, your body has to work hard to warm it up, burning extra calories in the process. 
room temperature water is absorbed by the body more quickly and then, then cold water. So you'll feel hydrated and refreshed sooner. Plus, cold water can cause stomach cramps and other digestive issues. If you're looking for an easy way to boost your health, drinking room temperature water is a great place to start. You will, live, you will not live long without water. Proper hydration is essential to your survival. Your body needs to consume a, a significant amount of water each day to function properly. This is because you constantly excrete water through sweat and urination. So your body needs to replenish the lost fluid. Remember, it's only possible so to survive without water for a matter of days. You may be susceptible to the effects of dehydration even sooner, depending on certain factors such as your age or the climate, especially with the hot sun we have here in the Bahamas. You have to be very careful. So why drink more water? It removes toxins from the body, and I mentioned a few of these already. Cushions the spinal cord. Maintain a healthy mouth. Improve brain function. Raises energy level, help with digestion, help you lose weight, promote healthy skin, prevent joint pain and arthritis, help fight infection, promote a healthy heart, and help maintain your blood pressure. The bottom line, water is important to nearly, to nearly every part of your body. Not only will drinking your daily recommended intake help you maintain your current state of being, it may even improve your overall health. Carry a bottle of water with you wherever you go. This way, you can drink whenever the need strikes. Keep track of your intake. Aim to take an optimum amount every day, a minimum of half your body weight in ounces. Example, 100 pounds divided by two equal 50 ounces, and that's approximately seven cups. So if you're 200 pounds, you need about 14 cups. Remember, water is important to life. Without water, there'll be no life. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's good to see those of us who are here on this education Sabbath. And um, the best educator ever walked the face of this earth was Jesus. We want to sing number 311. I would be like Jesus. 311. Jesus, what's that so? 
that in heaven he may meet me, I would be like Jesus, that his words well done may greet me, I would be like Jesus, oh be like Jesus, there's my song, in the home and in the throne, be like Jesus all day long, I would be like Jesus, amen. Number 305, give me Jesus, everything is about Jesus, he is our greatest teacher. It's all about him. 305. In the morning when I rise, give me who? Jesus. Many of us want Jesus. What a beautiful song. 
every time we get up in the morning, in the evening, whatever, just give me Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful song. We're going to sing number 207. You know, I love this song because we need Jesus every day, but we have to prepare for that day when he comes, you know, and that's education, learning, all right? Number 207, it may be at morn when the day is awakening. 207. <laughs> and shadow is breaking that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from this world his own oh Lord Jesus how returneth hallelujah hallelujah amen hallelujah okay sorry you only have time for one stance of that beautiful song I'm just enjoying that song but guess what then why should we be back here next week you know we can finish the song Right in the same place, all right? We can finish this song, all right? Church must roll on. Let us sing number 10. Come, Christians, join to sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Number 10. Let us stand. Let us sing this as they... This is the song. Come, Christians, join to sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, praise to Christ our King. Hallelujah. Amen. Let all with heart and voice be. Good morning and happy Sabbath church. It's so good to see all your beautiful and handsome faces in the sanctuary this Sabbath morning. Here are the announcements for Sabbath August 13th, 2022. Funeral service for Brother Michael Douglas will be held at the Hillview Seminary Adventist Church on Sunday, August 21st, beginning at 11 a.m. Please continue to keep the family in your prayers and all of those that have loved, lo has lost loved ones. Our Wednesday night prayer and prayer service, do you really know what you believe? Do you know what to believe? Join us this Wednesday, August 17th, as we explore our fundamental belief number 24, Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. You don't want to miss it. The Adventist Youth Department basketball season in the South Bahamas Conference continues this evening at 8.30 p.m. at the Anatole Rogers Gymnasium. You are invited to come out and support our Hillview team. Go Hillview! 
it's okay, it's okay. I know, you, I know you're getting gearing up to it, it's okay. From our education department, all primary, junior, and secondary school students are invited back to church this evening at 7.45 for a back to school social hosted by the department, along with parents and guardians as well, to enjoy as you receive your, the children, school supplies for a great new school year. And I know you parents are excited that your kids are going back to school. Yay! <laughs> you're gearing up, you're gearing up, I get you. Stop it now. Abuse prevention emphasis will be the highlight on Sabbath, August 27, with a special planned divine service focusing on the theme from a biblical perspective. All are invited. The South Bahamas Conference Women's Ministry Department in conjunction, in conjunction with the ATCU, that's the, the union, invites you to participate in the End It Now March and Rally Against Domestic Violence that Sabbath afternoon, August 27th, 2022, and it's beginning at 5 p.m. Please, you are encouraged to bring along your water bottles and your water. We invite the entire church to get involved in this initiative as it is one that could affect any of us. Please contact Amika Davis, Sister Enid Roll, Sister Opal Morant, or our church's secretary to place your t-shirt orders. All t-shirt orders should be in by August 20th. The family, uh, the family ministry department presents financial security and extra income streams seminar on August 27, 2022 at 8 p.m. All are invited to attend and participate. That should be good. Birthday greetings are extended to DNL Jones, who celebrated a birthday on August 10th, Simone Janora and Akil Wilson on both on August 11th. Congratulations are also extended to persons celebrating their anniversaries this week, which will include Brother Roy Brown Jr. and Sister Jacqueline Brown, who celebrate. 32 years of marriage on August 12th. We say, may God continue to bless you to see many more. Prayers and well wishes are extended to the Hillview scholars returning to school, both here and abroad. May the Lord ensure your success as you fully explore and fulfill your God-given potential. And you know a lot of them have already um, left, those of that went off, they already left, so please remember to keep them in your prayers as they're away from their family, but they're never away in our hearts. The church is reminded that all information for the bulletin should be submitted no later by Wednesday at 3 p.m. via the email address, which is hillview7thday at gmail.com. That's H-I-L-L-V-I-E-W-S-E-V-E-N. T-H-D-A-Y at gmail.com. Just keep in your mind, please, dates to remember. As I said before, August 27, the abuse, emphasis, uh, abuse prevention, emphasis Sabbath, and our rally and march, which begins at 5 p.m., and our September 3rd will be the Family Life Emphasis Sabbath. And last but no means least, I know we heard about our Bible Connect for Adventurers last week's Sabbath, and we had our very own Zyra Rollins, who participated in, and she came number one. So we want to say a very special thank you so much for doing uh, the work of God, your family, and this great church who is uh, behind you, 100%, and we're going to give you a small little token of your dedication for coming first and just being a great young lady and participating. Syrah.
not only her club and her church is also, uh, not only her club and her church is very proud of her, we also have her family and friends who are also proud of her, so she has a double portion this Sabbath morning. It always does my heart so good to see our kids do what our children do work for God. So we had our Bible Connect last week, Adventurers, that's with Zyra. So I want the church. You are invited. You are just, you just so show your support this afternoon for our Bible Connection Pathfinders. And we have our very own Kenzanique Steron, who will represent Hillview Stingers. And I just want to say, you are already a winner in my eyes. Just thank you for your participation, okay? That is this afternoon. It will be live streamed on YouTube and on Zoom starting at 6 p.m. So closer to the time, you can check our WhatsApp church chat and you will see the login information for the Zoom, okay? I know we also forgot a birthday greeting. I saw it on Facebook, and she's present here. We also had Morgan, Sister Morgan, who's sitting right here in the beautiful pink up front. She celebrated a birthday as well. Was it Friday? She celebrated her birthday on Friday. So we say happy birthday, Morgan. Have a happy Sabbath, church. Enjoy the Sabbath. As women, we are leading the charge in the South Bahamas to end violence against men, women, and children. Through an outreach campaign, we will join 15 million Adventist members in creating a global movement that will be mobilized within our communities. Each person actively working to create awareness and to share solutions on ways to end this global problem. On August 27, 2022, we call on you to march together for this cause. Nupaka fell pukotnu. Acompanyanos. Necesitamos tu ayuda. Come, join us. We need your help. In Nassau, beginning at Windsor Park at 4 p.m. and leading to Rawson Square for a rally. Join us. Together with one voice, we can end it now. Happy Sabbath, Hillview family. Today, we are featuring Ms. Charlene Scavallo on our family focus. Charlene joined Hillview in April of 2013. She is a single parent of one daughter, Jeremy DeVoe. Charlene currently works in the insurance industry and is also an entrepreneur with her own catering business. Her favorite scripture is Psalms 27 verse 14, which says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. What she loves about this verse is, one, it reminds her to wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and two, because sometimes we want things to come in our own time. It reminds us to wait until God says he is ready. Her favorite hymn is Because He Lives, and this reminds her that he is there every day, morning, noon, and night, 
when she needs him. She is interested in becoming more involved wherever she can assist when the need arises. Her prayer for Hillview is that we continue to pray together and show love and kindness towards all our brothers and sisters in our church family. Thank you, Sister Charlene Scavala, for sharing with us today. I invite you to stand for the call to worship, please. For the call to worship, I will be reading selected verses from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, come. Let us bow down and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for we, the church, are called to worship. Father, we come into your presence today to worship you. We pray that you will accept our worship and we will give you all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. My name is Desiree, and it's a pleasure for me to welcome you families, friends, students, teachers, and anybody who I left out here today. I thank you for coming out and worshiping with us. The church extends warmest welcome to you today as we celebrate Education Day. May God bless you as you worship with us today. Praise Him, praise Him. 
Now, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. I too would like to extend my code of welcome to us as we, as Education Secretary, as we celebrate today's Education Day. If you notice on the program, Sister Emma Jacks was slated to speak at this time, but she's unavoidably absent. So I'll say a few words um, in that stead. We are today celebrating Education Day, as we would have mentioned earlier. Our theme is educating, educating for now and eternity. We want to thank you for your support um, of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education as is demonstrated by your presence here today. And we crave your continued support of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. I want to bring you greetings on behalf, of our, on behalf of, our, of our pastor who is traveling on official church duties and who is in full support of Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. I also bring you greetings from our head elder, Elder Anthony Burrows, who is also traveling as well, and also is an education director for our conference, and he's a member of our church as well. Um, we also want to bring you greetings from our principal of Bahamas Academy, Mrs. Juliet Sands, who is also unavoidably absent. She has other um, engagement, prior engagement. And Mrs. Elmo Jack, our vice principal, who also had a prior engagement. But we are happy that you are here today to celebrate with us as we celebrate Education Day. Remember, the work of education and redemption are one. And we know that the Lord is present with us today. And so let us continue to pass in his presence as we worship in spirit and in truth. Now, this is Education Day. And she come up here and she said, good morning, and I hear a word from the audience. Like, huh? We come to worship God. We come to praise. All right, we sit down there like, we, and we like, we come to sing. Let us do just that and receive the blessing. We're going to sing number four, two, four, nine. Praise him, praise him. And I want to hear you all singing on top of your voice as you come to praise the Lord this morning on this education Sabbath. Let us be educated by the, the only true wise God. Let us sing lustily. Let us put our all into worshiping God because he is so good to us. He is so good to us. Let us all stand as we sing four, 249. Praise him, praise him. Let us sing. Let us lift the roof. Make these lights go blinking. All right? We're going to sing. Jesus who bore our sorrow, love. 
Sabbath Church. Our inspirational thought comes to us this morning from the Stewardship Ministries I Want to Be Faithful Bible Study Guide. God has laid his hand upon all things, both man and his possessions, for all belongs to him. He says, I am the owner of the world. The universe is mine and I require you to consecrate I require you to consecrate to my service the first fruits of all that I through my blessing have caused to come into your hands. This tribute he demands as a token of our loyalty to him. CS 72. Repeat after me please. I choose factors I choose to accept God as the creator of all. I recognize God as the owner of my life. I see God as the owner of my money and all material possessions. I thank God for providing for all my needs. Will the deacons please prepare for the offertory? Let us pray. I am wholly thine, my Savior. Thou hast paid the ransom for my soul and all that I am or ever hope to be in thine. Help me to acquire means not to expend foolishly, not to indulge pride, but to use to thine own name's glory. CS 46. Have a wonderful Sabbath day.
As Education Secretary, I cannot perform my task alone, but I am assisted by a fine team of assistants that helps to keep the wheels in this department turning. So I'm gonna invite all my assistants to please stand at this time, as we recognize you, um, Sister Diane Jones, Sister Brenda Toot, Sister Carlina Sands, Sister Desiree Brown, and Sister Elizabeth Jarrett. Thank you very much for your assistance in the department. Thank you, and you may be seated. In our first education day that we had early in the year, the focus was on students, and today our focus will be on our educators. And actually indulge me for a few moments as we try to um, recognize the educators who are in our church, and they're quite a good number of us. We can never underestimate the role of educators they play in all our lives. And I'm sure we are where we are today, all of us, because of the impact that educators have on our lives. So I want to take some time out to recognize our educators. First, I want to recognize those of, who have worked in the trenches and have retired, or they have worked for some time and have moved on to other areas of interest. So you want to recognize those educators who were former teachers, or they have worked and have retired. And these persons include, I'm going to call the names, and if we're not calling names, just stand quickly. We have the ushers ready to pass you a certificate of appreciation that we have prepared for you, especially for you. And we ask if there's a family member here, and the person's not here, you could stand and receive on their behalf. Our neighbor or friend, you could do the same. We want to speed this up a bit, so as a hearing name, please stand so we can quickly dispense of this. So, um, first person, well, Dr. Toot, Pastor Toot, our pastor, was a teacher. If you didn't know that he was a teacher, so we want to recognize him. Sister Toot will receive this on his behalf. Sister Brenda. Um, Mr. Anthony Barrows, our education director for the conference. He also was a teacher, now working in the education department of the conference. And the one here to receive on his behalf, I can pass it over. Mrs. Rowena Smith. Please stand while one of the ushers will pass you. I'm sure they have a blood there for you. Um, Mrs. Marissa Claire Wilson, our family member, if she's not here. Sister Jacqueline Brown, Mackenzie Brown, please stand. Uh, she will please stand where you are. Sister Linda Gibson, our family member. Um, Ms. Natala, Mrs. Natala Whitlock, if she's not here, a family member may receive on her behalf. Mrs. Jalitha Humes, a family member or someone may receive on her behalf. Mr. Randolph Bowlin, a family member may receive, oh, well, he's there, okay, Mr. Bowlin's here. Um, Mr. Bill Sturrock, William Bill Sturrock. Mr. Terrence Roll. Um, he's in the booth, so I'm sure he can receive this later on today. He can come on right now. Mrs. Jennifer Roll and Mrs. Mrs. Leonie Wilson. Coming down. And Mrs. Hayes Claire. Also, there are among us the teachers who work at Bahamas Academy. There are some of us who work at Bahamas Academy. That include Mrs. Juliet Sands, Mrs. Elmo Jacks, Mrs. Diane Jones. Mrs. Uh, well, I think I have one here for her. Please. <laughs> sure. Mrs. Monique Hepburn, Mrs. Violet Bowling, Mrs. Sharon St. Bryce, and yours truly. All right, so our tech is having the, the PowerPoint played. So yes, that's right, keep it that way, keep it that way, please. Um, now, there are teachers who work in the public and private school system as well. They are Adventist educators, but they're not at Bahamas Academy. They do play a part in um, educating our children as well. So wherever they are, they also are shedding the light of Christian education as well. So we want to organize these persons as well. Um, Mrs. Brenda Tooth. 
have your sister too. Mrs. Cynthia Brown. Miss Renee Bow. Miss Yvonne Fowler. And if you're here, our phone member here, they can receive on their behalf. Mrs. Kendira Hannah Murray. Miss Elizabeth Jarrett, I have yours right here. Miss Melanie Josie. And I have asked some of my assistants to give out a few tokens so they could go ahead and do that right now. Um, I should have called it earlier, but you can, you can get that going right now. So the, the person whose name I've called before, if you could just stand again for me, all names I've called, except not the retirees, but the active teachers, if you could stand again while our assistants will bring those, those tokens to you. This song is for those so that's Ms. That, that, so that was uh, Mrs. Juliet Sand, Mrs. Elmore Jacks, Mrs. Diane Jones, Mrs. Molly Catburn, Mrs. Violet Bowlin, Mrs. Sharon St. Bryce, Mrs. Brenda Toot, Mrs. Cynthia Brown, Mrs. Renee Bow. Sandra Burrows, Elizabeth Jarrett, stand again please, Kendira Hanna, Rainel McKenzie, Roll, Mr. Franco Monker and Mrs. Tamara Monker, Mrs. Shani, Ms. Shani Taylor, Ms. Taylor right here. Mrs. Desiree Brown, Mrs. Latoya Burrows, Mr. Marvis David, Mrs. Zelda Hannah, Mrs. Ingrid Morris, Mr. Stanley North, Mrs. Shantia Rose, Mrs. Carlina Sands, Mrs. Crystal Strawn, Miss Carol Swaving, Mr. Jaden McKenzie, Mrs. Charmaine Lewis Rollins, Mrs. Lynn Swaving, Miss Amelia McKenzie. Mr. Lester Stewart. Miss Demisia Murder, Miss Linda Forbes. All the teachers who work outside the Adventist system, but they do shed their light wherever they are. I want to thank them for the work they're doing as educators. Let's give them a hard aim and a round of applause. Thank you very much for that. So, as you can see, you have quite a bit of us in the church, and we have to recognize our educators because, as I said earlier, all of us are where we are because of the impact an educator, some educators had on our lives. Thank you very much, educators, for the work that you have done for those that are retired and those that are still doing in the field of education. If I overlook anyone, I want to express my apology for that, and if I do, please let me know sometime today so we can fix that. All right, and thank you um, to my assistants who helped to have these out quickly. I didn't want to spend too much time in this segment, so thank you very much for your assistance, all right? Um, I have a few more things to do, and then I'm done. We want to express our thanks to our church members who have supported and continue to support some of the Adventist Christian education. Um, we also wish at this time to congratulate all the students who graduated this year, either from 
University or High School or Elementary, wherever you graduated from, we want to thank, we want to express our congratulations to you for the work you have done to have achieved that milestone. We also want to congratulate our students who have been successful in their BJC and BGCSE examinations. The results were published this week. Um, I don't know the results of anyone, hardly, but if you were one of them who took the exam and were successful, we want to express congratulations to you. May the Lord continue to guide you as you continue to pursue your studies. Um, now the new school year is upon us, and students and teachers have, and parents as well, are moving into high gear in preparation. We, today we're inviting our students from kindergarten all the way to high school level to come back this afternoon around after sunset, after Vespers, we have a little token for you to get you off to a good school here. Okay, a few books, pencils, pens, you know, things of that nature we have for you. We also want to have a mini social, just a little fun time together. So we want to be here for about eight o'clock, have a little fun time, have a little mid, um, few refreshments, and then we have your supplies, and then we are on our way. That shouldn't be no later than, you know, by 10 o'clock we should be out of here, okay? So we want to invite you to come back, please, so you can benefit from all of these. I want to thank those members who help us, who donated, donated supplies. I've been asking for a few weeks now, well, quite a bit for members to donate supplies to help the students, and we did get some supplies. I want to thank those members. I, I don't want to call their names at this time. I don't think they want their names to be called anyhow, but I want to thank those members who came through and donated stuff. So let's give for them a, a hearty amen. Thank you. We appreciate your contribution, and when our students are successful, you'll be proud to know that you have played a vital part in that success. Finally, I wish to thank the Education Committee members who assisted in this packaging of material that we'll be getting today, and those who will come out later on to assist in preparation in the mini social, Sister Jackie Brown as well, DNL Jones, um, Sister Opal Moran, Sister Carmita Ramming, a person who, along with the committee, um, have helped and will help us as we conclude the day's activities. Now, one final thing I need to do before I go, um, I'm looking for nine students who are nine years old. Nine students, come right up here. Nine students who are nine years old are about to turn nine. Eight plus, nine, nine plus. I need nine persons, nine students. Come on, quickly. Nine students who are nine years old. Come right up. I want to see one. Okay. Two, three. Looking for six more. Come on. No, I'm asking nothing difficult. It will be nothing difficult. Just come on right up. Nine persons. All right, so we can move to age seven as well, or, or even 10, seven, eight, nine, 10. Seven, eight, nine, 10, okay, let's go there. Seven, eight, nine, 10, we need nine persons. Come on, I'm sure there are others in the church. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Come on up. Amen, so we have three, five. Oh, wow. Six. Seven. You have seven. All right. Okay, you made it. You made it. Two, five, seven. Eight. Can we get one more? One more? All right. Okay, we'll go with the eight then. Since um, Delia, please come. Delia Lundy. No, Delia Lundy is nine years old, and she turns nine on the 5th of September. Now, out of generosity between her and her parent, she is prepared to donate a school bag to nine students in com to commemorate her ninth birthday. So, Delia, you get your school bags. 
So these persons who come will receive a free school bag to start the school year off. All right, so here, so come on right up. I don't know what her colors are, so if you want to adjust the color you're getting, I don't know if you have the, the options of colors. All right, so thank you, Dahlia and their parents for making this contribution to our students. This is a foretaste of what to come later because later, as I said, we'll be giving other supplies so you can bring your bags later to receive your supplies to take it home. All right. And that's what we are as a church. We look out for each other and we help where we can because, you know, people, there are people in need and sometimes we don't know who have, who have the need. We just have to, you know, put out there and assist where we can so we can um, help someone to be a better person as they go to school without having certain needs that would have hindered their progress. So if you could come together, come together and we'll really take a picture of um, Sister Delia along with the students. Why don't you come to one side? Yeah, okay. I just learned that the, the bags is not the bags are not, em, are not empty. There are books, there are rulers, there are pencils. What else is in there? Folders, glue, crayons, sharpener. Wow, this is great. This is great. This is great. And this is what we are as a church. Hillview, that's Hillview. I want to thank Dahlia for making this contribution along with her parents. Is Dahlia there? Thank you and God bless. Have a happy school year. You can return to your seats now. So God bless and have a happy summer. At this time, I want to invite the Mali David to bring us special music. Let's welcome her with a hearty amen. amen.
Amen. But what else can we ask of the Lord? What else can we say to him? But to say, Lord, I surrender all. It's prayer time, church, so I want to invite you to join us now. Um, if you can leave with us, we appreciate that. If you can't, we'll do, but be act in reverence. Get yourself in a posture of reverence as we prepare to speak to our Lord. Let us pray. Father, we surrender all as we bow before you today. We come not thinking that we are good or we have done anything good. We come recognizing that you are our God and Father. You are our Savior and you are our friend. And we are indeed grateful for the privilege of granting us the opportunity you have given us where we can come together in this corporate session to worship and adore your most holy name. As we do so, Lord, we ask you to bless each person at the sound of my voice. Those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are on our um, YouTube channel and those who are listening otherwise. I ask you to extend your blessing far and wide. We pray, Lord, for those among us who may be sick, those who are facing various challenges in life. If those, for those who are sick, we ask your healing power on their body. We touch them. If they're in the hospital, I ask you to guide the hands of the physicians, the doctors, the nurses as they attend to their care. Those are having, who are having financial difficulties, we also pray that you touch wherever you can to ensure that there's some relief in those areas. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost loved ones, that you continue to comfort them in this year difficult time. Father, I want to pray for our students of our church and students of our nation and our teachers and our parents as we all prepare to return to school to begin, begin the new school year, 2022 to 2023. The years, for the past two years, has been very challenging with COVID, lack of face-to-face um, -face learning, learning remotely, and things of that nature which have seriously impacted parents, students, and teachers. But Father, we ask that you continue to work through the difficulties that are faced. Help us that when challenges come, that we can overcome them with your help and that we can come out even stronger because it's only through challenges that we can know exactly what we are made of. So we ask, Lord, your guidance upon these parents as they try to find funds for school fees, for those who have to pay school fees to find funds for uniform, books, lunch money, bus fare as, as needs may be, whatever is needed to get started for the school year. We ask that you will provide the necessary funding so they can receive that. I want to thank the, our church members who have chipped in to assist those of us who may need the help to get started for the school year. We also pray for the um, students themselves as they return to school, help them to be focused in the, in the learning environment. Help us remember to, to, to note that education is a key, one of the keys to success and they need to focus as they move on to that point of success. Pray for, for the teachers, grant them the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, and the patience to deal with the students as they come. Because we know, Lord, you know, we face the class of, say, 30 students, 30 backgrounds, 30 personalities, things that, like that nature. And the teacher has to contend with all of that and work through in an amicable way to ensure that each person learns. Father, we pray that the grant teachers the wisdom, the knowledge and the understanding to be able to do so. Pray, Lord, that you bless all members of our church as we gather here today. I want to present to you our speaker, Dr. Carey, as he speaks the word coming from your throne. May you touch him with the Holy Spirit as he speaks. It may not be his words from his mouth, but the words that you have impressed on his heart to speak to your people. I ask you, Lord, to bless our school, Bahamas Academy, bless our other institutions around as they continue to work towards educating our nation. Father, we ask your blessing on the church as we worship today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The passage of scripture chosen for our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. That's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. I invite the congregation to stand. I would be reading from the King James Version. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and off thy gates. May the Lord continue to bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, church. Dr. John Carey is a proud son of Mars Bay, South Andros. He is married to Suzara Batts of Trinidad. This union produced two sons, John Gerald and John Garfield. Dr. and Mrs. Carey are proud grandparents of two girls and three boys. He graduated from Oakwood College in 1967 with a Bachelor's of Arts in English. He obtained a Master of Arts in Teaching at Andrews University in 1969 and a Doctorate in Educational Administration in 1985. In August of 1968, he was appointed principal of Bahamas Academy. Upon completing a tenure of 10 years, Dr. Carey was invited to join the faculty of West Indies College, which we know now as Northern Caribbean University, as chairman of the secondary education department. He also served as dean of students during his last year at West Indies College. Several years later, he served as an adjunct professor of education at Andrews University and West Indies Youth College. Dr. Carey served as education director in the Bahamas Conference for over 20 years. He was ordained to the gospel ministry in 1991, serving as pastor in New Providence as well as the family islands until his retirement. Despite his retirement on December 9, 2009, he continues to contribute to society through a number of civic organizations. His favorite text is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And his motto for life is, being in Christ is my only option. Just before he comes, we will be favored with a special item of music from Brene Bethel. For both of them, let me hear you give them a hearty amen.
should the shadows come? Why does my heart If his eyes are on the sparrow, I'm certain he watches us who are made in his image. Thank you so much, Sister Brenda Toot, for accepting the task to introduce me, your old principal. Uh, Brenda, and I am taking the liberty to say Brenda, was one of my top students when I was principal of Bahamas Academy. And she has done well in her career as an educator herself. 
I must say thanks to your pastor, Dr. Toot, for giving me the privilege of sharing in this Education Day. Um, I'm retired, and I suppose he could have asked any of the younger folk to be here, but uh, it's fallen my lot, and I'm, I'm pleased to be a part of this celebration of our youth and our teachers who are working together in education for their good and the honor and glory of God. Before I get into what I have to say, my short message, uh, let's bow our heads. Father, again, we thank you for bringing us together as your children to worship on this Sabbath day as we celebrate Adventist Christian education, we pray that we will get the true meaning of what it means to be a Seventh-day Adventist teacher, student, parent, guardian, and supporter. May we glean something from this sitting together that will help us prepare for your coming. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Adventist Christian education, the best option. I believe all thinking people will agree that the environment in which we now live today, in this 21st century, presents a unique challenge to parents and guardians who are concerned about the wholesome development of their children. Things are not good. As you look around the world, and even here in our little country, almost every day there's something going on that's contrary to the will of God. So many voices are clamoring for our children's attention. And unless our little darlings and youth are exposed to a strong Bible-based educational program, they could easily be swept away in the wrong direction. To address this problem, the passage chosen for our scripture reading is telling us, adults, that we need to love the triune God wholeheartedly and to teach our children to do the same. And we teach by precept and example. It's not good enough to tell our children, this is what you ought to do. Do this, do that. And we just sit by and watch. We need to show them by example how to live. That is what Christian education is all about. In fact, Christian education is the cooperation of the home, the church, and the school. And I like to call it the Christian education triad, symbolizing a three-legged stool. Most of you have seen a three-legged stool. Now, if you take one leg off, will that stand up? No. So the three are important. The home, the church, and the school. They have to work together in concert for the benefit of our young people. And so to address the problem that I mentioned, Adventist Christian education, in my view, is the best option. This working together of the home, the church, and the school 
ought to be a consistent program, not haphazardly, not spasmodically, but consistently. Yes, this ought to be done consistently, systematically, at every opportunity available to us. Now, by what means should this important instruction take place that I refer to? Again, from my view, from where I sit, Adventist education is the best option we can use to accomplish this task. In the book Education, page 13, Ellen White states that education, true education, has to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is the harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. It prepares the student for the joy of service in this world and for the higher joy of wider service in the world to come. Now, in this statement, I see the purpose of Adventist Christian education. It is to enable the students to develop a life of faith in God and to use their knowledge, skills, and understandings to serve God and humanity. Put another way, every student will excel in faith, in learning and service while blending biblical truth and academic achievement to honor God and bless others. Now, just as we take the mission of the church seriously, and we've been talking a lot about the mission I will go, mission of the church, taking the gospel to the world, just as we take this seriously, we must be serious about the education of our children. One Adventist educator suggests that Adventist education is the engine that drives the mission of the church. And I agree with Ellen White when she says that the work of education and that of redemption are the same, which is to restore in man the image of the creator. So we cannot minimize the importance of Adventist Christian education. It is very important to all conscientious Seventh-day Adventists. Now, there are three essentials of Adventist education that highlight the importance of this education that I'm talking about. Number one, it prepares young people to function successfully in the world. Very important. That is, they are equipped to earn a living and have the social skills to get along with others. Now, there are some people who can earn a living, but they can't get along with cats or dogs. And that's not good. So, Adventist education prepares the students not only to earn a living, but be able to relate with other people. But if this is the only thing Adventist education achieves, it, is, it has failed. For the government schools and other secular institutions of learning do a fairly good job with this. Yeah, they help their students to meet the requirements of the job market and they're able to relate to other people in society. They do a fairly good job with it. We don't need to just duplicate what they are doing and compete with them. Our system ought to produce the most courteous, honest, and conscientious workers and citizens. And I say amen to that. When an apprentice goes on the job, the boss ought to say, 
there goes an honest, conscientious worker. You know, ought not to have second thoughts about that worker. Number two, the second important essential of Adventist education is to prepare young people for the world to come. This essential function is brought into focus in the reference to the work of redemption and the work of ed education being one at which I mentioned earlier. For in education, as in redemption, other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Our teachers do everything they possibly can to help the student come into a saving relationship with Christ. If we were to stop with this second essential, we still would fall short of the goal and be just like any other Christian school where students are introduced to Christ. A lot of Christian schools introduce students to Christ on a regular basis. However, Adventist education takes the matter a little further, take a step higher. And that brings me to essential number three. While the first two essentials of Adventist education are very important, the third essential introduces the unique doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This sets Adventist education apart from all the other systems of the world. No other system can fulfill this need for our children. Only Adventist education can. Adventist education is not just a side show into the nomination's mission. It is the gospel of Christ to the world. The mission of the church is to take this gospel to the world. An Adventist education is an integral part of that. For our schools help to prepare persons to carry the gospel to the world. And so, in a world of shifting values, Adventist education gives students a strong foundation which incorporates four cornerstones that are critical for their growth and development. Number one, Adventist education helps students recognize that all truth is God's truth and that the triune God is the source of all truth. Therefore, the Adventist teacher must intentionally seek to connect all knowledge to the source and make students aware of this relationship. Now notice what the Bible says in James 1.17. And turn with me to that text, please. James 1.17. 17. <clears throat> and I'm reading. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from where? Above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So we know if it comes from above, it's solid. We can depend on it. It's reliable. It has meaning. And it is best for us. Also, John 1 and 17. St. John chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost provide truth, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Pillar number two, Adventist education fosters whole person development. That is the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. 
And Jesus was an example of that. In Luke 2.52, we are told that Jesus developed in all areas in favor with God and man. And that is what Adventist education tries to do, develop the whole person, not only concerned about living in this sphere, but preparing that individual to live in the world to come. Pillar number three, Adventist education nurtures faith. Ellen White says that the students in our schools, and all our youth for that matter, shall be given an education that will strengthen them in the faith. The other schools can't strengthen our children in our faith. Something else, but not in our faith. And we refer to this strengthening in the faith as the integration of faith and learning. As the teachers tell students what Christ has done for them, the students will put their trust in God because they see it demonstrated in the life of the teacher day by day. The fourth pillar, Adventist education prepares the students for eternity. Adventist educators are not just concerned about students passing examinations or graduating from school. They are also, also concerned about preparing them for eternal life. They have accepted the idea that the aim of education and redemption are one and the same, and that is to prepare students to live with Jesus in the world to come. This preparation involves being in Christ. We can't prepare for the world to come outside of Christ. Notice what Jesus himself says in John 15. John chapter 15 and verses four and five. He says, abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. So we have to abide in Christ. Now how do we abide in Christ? through prayer, surrendering to him every day, studying his word, and leaning on him for strength and guidance. And that ought to be a consistent routine, day by day, not a one-time deal. Every day, abiding in Christ. And then in 1 John 5, 1 John 5 now, Probably some of you haven't even noticed this text in the Bible. 1 John 5, verses 11 through 13. Okay, and I'm reading. It says, And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life is in whom? His Son. So he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of, Son of God. So my brothers and sisters, today if you believe in Jesus, and you abiding in him, you have eternal life now by faith. Yes, not tomorrow, not sometime in the future, now by faith. And the sooner we understand that and believe it, the sooner we'll be ready for the world to come. 
We cannot be ready for the world to come outside of Christ. Because the only way we're going to get into the other world when this earth burns up is if we are in Christ, who will take us out. And we can't get in Christ after we die. It has to be now. And this is the message we need to give to our children day by day. In Christ, you are covered. And you don't have to be all bent out of fear, worrying what's going to be happening later. You're in Christ now, and he takes care of you. Day by day, abiding in him through prayer, surrendering ourselves to him, studying up his word, and leaning on him for direction. And so, Adventist education has come a long way since 1853, when Martha Byington opened the first known church school for Sabbatarian Adventists in Bucksbridge, New York. Today, you will find Adventist schools in nearly 150 countries with 85,000 teachers and 1.5 million students in 7,500 schools. This tells me that the Adventist school system is one of the largest Christian educational systems in the world. I'm glad to be a part of that, following God's plan for education. And my brothers and sisters, I stand here today to say that I am a product of this system of school, from primary school right to graduate school, Adventist Christian education. Yes, it was not easy. Not easy. I attended Bahamas Academy, my siblings and I. My mother was a widow. Didn't have one copper to rub against the other. But she believed in Christian education. And she sent us to Bahamas Academy. Now, how did we make it? Poor. Nothing. No money. How did we make it? By determination, faith in God, and hard work. We worked after school, cleaning the yard, cleaning the school. That's how we did it. That's how we did it. Where there's a will, there's a way. And when I was ready to go off to college, I had no money. But my uncle, who's deceased now, God bless his soul, said to me, John, sell some books. Get into canvassing. Get into canvassing. And he quoted to me from, I think, his messages to young people. Ellen White said, don't wait for an opening. Make one for yourself. There are many people sitting around waiting for some handout, some people to do something for them. You need to get up and make an opening for yourself. And Jesus has promised to be with us and to help us achieve what we're aiming to do in his name. And so I sold books all over the place, Grandstown, all around, Farm Road, sold books. And when I was ready to go to school, I had $500 in my pocket. And my mother didn't have much. She gave me another $500. And I needed two more hundred dollars to pay for my first year of college. That's something in those days, twelve hundred dollars for the year at Oakwood. <laughs> you wish it would that way today. <laughs> and I went and I got to work. I didn't sit down, wait for someone up. I went to the laundry, worked in the laundry, washing clothes in the laundry. I could Work in any laundry now, washing clothes. I know how to do it. Did it. 
four years at Oakwood College. I not only worked in the laundry, but I had a job in the business office. I had another job downtown. I'm a tailor by trade, so I turning up cuffs, coat sleeve. And during the summers, I hit the road, canvassing. Four summers, three summers in North Carolina. And every summer I came back with my scholarship. Last summer in Canada, best summer I had in those days, $3,500 is good money. <laughs> Where there is a will, there's a way. Don't wait for an opening, make one for yourself. You put your shoulder to the wheel, and the Lord will help you. Yes. Although no school system on earth is perfect, Adventist Christian education plays a vital role in training our children and youth for eternity. Bahamas Academy is one of the 7,500 schools that prepare children and youth for a meaningful place in this world and a permanent place in the world to come. Therefore, with the home, the church, and the school working together, Adventist Christian education is the best option to educate our little darlings, and our young people, for eternity. May God bless you as you work together to accomplish this end for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 It's all about Jesus. More about Jesus, I would know. More of his grace toward the show. Let's stand and sing number 245 as we close our service today. 245.
Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the word that you have brought to us today. Lord, we realize that as teachers, we are tasked with preparing students for here and eternity as redemption and education are one. We ask, dear Lord, that you would be with the students and teachers as we go through this new school year. We ask that you would illuminate our minds to receive what it is that we have to from you most of all. And these things, dear Lord, we ask in thanksgiving, in Jesus' name, amen. 